I'm going to show you the audio feedback capabilities of the basic EMG application. Now just to summarize, the advantage of using audio feedback is that it in some sense makes the feedback less intrusive and therefore more compatible with mindfulness practice. So for example, you can sit with eyes closed and still have the feedback. So there are three forms of audio feedback. They are tone, MIDI and threshold based feedback. The first one, tone, is it's quite simple in concept. It's just that the software plays a tone whose pitch varies. It goes up and down in pitch as your muscle tension varies. MIDI feedback is very much the same concept, but instead of playing a tone, you get a sort of repeated musical note, for example, a piano note. So it's maybe slightly more aesthetic. And the third option, threshold based feedback, is perhaps the most useful because what you can do is you can make the feedback contingent upon some sort of event happening. So for example, the obvious thing is that the feedback can come in when your tension increases beyond a certain limit. Let's start with tone feedback. Okay, so here we are, we're in the basic EMG application. I'm using simulator which means that it's just playing back a recording, but everything in the software works just the same. So here's the muscle tension and it's going up and down. Now, if I start tone feedback, you'll hear a tone that rises and falls with pitch in sync with the signal. So here it, here it goes. I've turned it off again. So um, let me just tell you about the controls. All the controls for audio feedback are in this bottom right corner, um, with the exception of some of the threshold based feedback uh, options, which I'll cover later on. Okay, tone. So we've got a we've got a button that starts and stops it. So you don't have to have it there, but you can turn it on. And then there's a volume control. This slider is a volume control. Now, so you can have it really quiet if you want or or louder. You can also affect the volume by changing the PC's overall volume control. Um, what else do we have? Now, there is a range control for the audio feedback, for the tone feedback. Uh, it's here, right at the bottom of the screen. At the moment, I've got it on six microvolts, which is the same as what I've got on the short term display, but it doesn't have to be. You could have it to somewhere different. What does the range mean in the context of audio feedback? Well, it means that there's, well, with the tone, there's a maximum pitch and a minimum pitch. And the tone varies between the two and the range sets at what point, at what muscle tension, the, the maximum pitch is reached. So when I've got it to six, it effectively means that when the signal hits the top of the screen, because I've also got six on the short term display here. So when the, when the signal reaches the top of this display, then the, the pitch will hit its maximum and it won't increase beyond that. So it works very much analogously to the, uh, to the range control of the short term display. And similarly with the, with the lower limit, which is always zero in fact. So, so the, so the, the lowest pitch ha happens at zero, which is so low that you can't even hear it. So the, so the lower level is not really relevant. It's just the upper level that's, that's more relevant. So yeah, that's, that's tone feedback. One more control just to say something about is the averaging control. This, this sets the amount of smoothing on the tone. So if you set the average to something very low, then the, the tone will vary very rapidly with the signal. Um, something much higher, it'll be much smoother to change and, th and therefore maybe more aesthetic, uh, but also it's much less responsive. So with the average control, you're, you're trading smoothness against responsiveness. Let's move on to MIDI. So MIDI feedback works in just the same way, except instead of a tone, you get a repeated musical note, for example, a piano note. So here's a demonstration.
let's move on to MIDI feedback, which works just the same way as tone feedback, which is to say that Let's move on to MIDI feedback, which works pretty much the same as tone feedback. So it, but instead, <clears throat> let's move on to MIDI feedback, which works just like tone feedback, except instead of a tone, you get a MIDI note, which is a, a, a musical note, for example, a piano note. So here's a demonstration. <laughs> Okay, so that was the MIDI. So again, just like with tone feedback, the, the pitch of the note is what counts, it's what, what carries the feedback. So the higher the pitch, the higher the muscle tension. So it's it's kind of following the short-term graph just again. And the same, the controls are just the same as well. Obviously there's a separate uh, stop and start button just below tone feedback, and then there's a volume control, and the same range control applies. So there's only one range control that's shared between the two. So just to, just to recap, the range means that the the maximum pitch, sorry, the maximum pitch, is reached at in this case six microvolts, which is which is the same setting as I have for the short term display. So when the signal reaches the top of the chart, it's the maximum pitch. Now, yeah. I think MIDI, it's more sort of aesthetic than, than tone feedback. One thing about tone uh, that I forgot to mention before was that it doesn't sound very good when I'm using the video capture software because it's it's sort of too much for my little old computer to, to cope with. So it doesn't sound too bad when you're just using it without without video capture. But nonetheless, it doesn't it doesn't sound great. So so MIDI is perhaps a better option in that sense. Let's look at threshold-based feedback. So to repeat, the idea is that the feedback is contingent upon something happening. Or to put that another way, it's triggered by the muscle tension rising above a certain limit. Now in the software, that limit is represented by this dotted yellow line that's been in the short-term display all along. So, so that's it there. So now we finally get to see what that's about. So the idea is that if you tighten up beyond that limit, then a bell will sound. The bell is the feedback, it's the audio feedback, and it's triggered by the signal crossing the dotted yellow line. So what I'll do is I'll just demonstrate it. Now often, the first when you first turn it on, it rings anyway, but from now on, Yeah, from now on, it only rings when it crosses the threshold, as it has done. I'll wait for one more. Okay, so the, you get the idea. I'll turn it off now. So, yeah, you can probably get the sense that the threshold-based feedback is, is, is a bit more powerful. And it's more relevant or more useful in a context of mindfulness practice where you don't want the feedback to be dominating your awareness. You want to get on with your mindfulness practice and you want the feedback just to come in and remind you only when you've sort of drifted away or even tightened up. So that's the power of it. So when, you, when you're there and you're relaxed and you're soft and you're just you're aware, you don't want the feedback to be taking you away from that awareness. But when you do tighten up, perhaps because you've become distracted, then you want it to remind you. That's the idea of threshold-based feedback in, in the context of mindfulness practice. Okay, let's have a look at the, some of the controls associated with the threshold, threshold-based feedback. So the controls are basically here, these few here, and to some extent, we've got the, the on-off switch here, which I've already shown you. And this is a, a volume control. This slider is a volume control. So you can increase the volume or decrease the volume. Um, I've already shown you that the, the, the threshold itself 
can be changed. That's probably the most important control. And you can drag the level by clicking with your mouse and holding down and then dragging it to where you want it to be. Now the ideal place is going to be sort of just above your baseline relaxed state. Yeah, not too close, but you want it to just, uh, you want the feedback coming in when you've just tightened up just a little beyond that level. Okay, so that's the threshold level. Now, you can also configure the threshold so that it works the other way around. So instead of being triggered when you go above the limit, it's triggered when you go below. And you can change that with this combo box control here. So if I set it below, then now the, the threshold is working like a reward. So if I drag it down here somewhere, that's like my target. Yeah. So so now whenever that when I whenever I get low enough that the signal goes below that, then I'll get the bell sound. Yeah. So it's more like a reward than a warning. So you can work it that way if you want. But most of the time it's probably best to use it in the above form. Now the next control, this next combo box is an averaging control. So it controls the smoothness again. So it's just like the, the control that we had for the short term display. Um, it, it's doing the same job. It's, it's just repeated. So a lower value and the, the signal will vary much more sort of responsively. Yeah. But a higher value, it varies more smoothly. So, so you're balancing responsiveness and smoothness. So I, I prefer to set it something around about two seconds. So that's the average. Now the next control is called duration. Now the idea of, of this is that, okay, let's say the threshold is up there and you want to, so now it, the threshold will be triggered when the signal goes above the limit and stays above for the duration. So if I set it to say two seconds, now the, the signal has to go above the dotted yellow line for two seconds continuously before the sound comes in. And by the way, these light indicators are showing that pattern there. So uh, in a minute, it'll come back down again. And essentially you'll see that the yellow light comes on when the signal first crosses the threshold and then the red one comes in when it's been above the threshold for the duration of two seconds. Now yellow and briefly red there. Yeah. So you get the idea. So you can set it to whatever you want. And the idea of that is that you can use it to filter out little insignificant movements or, or tightenings. Yeah. So imagine that you, that you just wanted to move your posture during your practice uh, and you did it very briefly and you don't need to be reminded of that. So you could filter that out by, by setting it to something like two or above, or you can just leave it and just worry too much about it. So that's the duration control. And essentially those, those are the controls that are to do with the, the threshold. The last thing to show you is just a variation, a minor variation of threshold based feedback, which is that you can apply the threshold to either the tone or the MIDI feedback. So let's, uh, let's turn on say MIDI feedback here. Now, if I check this checkbox, checkbox here, then the MIDI notes only play, they only play when the signal is above the threshold, like now, and then they go off again. Same applies to tone feedback when I check this box here. So you get the basic idea. So now you're ready for the next exercise, which is to run an EMG biofeedback session in which you investigate for yourself the audio feedback options that I've been describing here, and especially the threshold based audio feedback, which can, of course, help uh, and support mindfulness practice. 
And then ideally you would turn this into a series of sessions in which you explore mindfulness using audio threshold-based feedback.